You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. This is Mike Lodge. I'm glad that you're with me. It's a Friday morning. It is the weekend, finally. No, this week went by zooming fast. I'm surprised that we're even at this time already because it's gone by so fast. But we have to be grateful, right? We have to be grateful that we had this week. We accomplished a lot. We did a lot of things. We talked to a lot of people. Maybe made a couple of friends. I hope I made a couple of friends out there in my podcast. You know, tell me if you're listening to my podcast. Send me a text at 818-252-5682 and just tell me that you're listening. Because sometimes I wonder, you guys are very quiet out there. Not sure what you're doing. So listen, um, it's morning time. I got my cup of coffee. Do you have your cup of coffee? Because I'm ready to go. Listen, I was watching last night's. I really wasn't watching. I was uh, listening to it as I was driving um, the press conference of uh, Mr. Biden. So what did we learn? Not a damn thing. <laughs> That's the problem. We had the press that that gave him these easy questions that he had written down by the way he had the answers written down he also had a press book that had every picture of anybody that was there and what the question was going to be so the whole thing was staged it was rehearsed it was nonsense no tough questions no questions that uh, you know one of the things that i that I, i i don't get about this president is well i guess maybe i do get it because we're dealing with an individual who doesn't have the mental faculties of an individual that should be leading he is being led but he is not leading he has individuals telling him what to do and telling him what to say but he is not leading this nation so at this moment this nation does not have a leader Now, listen, I like Joe Biden. I have followed Joe Biden throughout the years. I've loved all of his gaffes because it kind of showed that he was kind of semi-human. The problem is is that he was a politician who made mistakes. He He made mistakes with what he said and what he did, what he wrote. And so now what we're seeing is an individual who is up in his years, who has lost his faculties his mental faculties, and he can't even put a sentence together or complete a sentence. I mean, it's it's a sad thing to watch. So at the moment, we have no leadership in, in the nation. We have people who are running around him pretending they're leaders, but they're not. And now he wants to send uh, Harris down to the border and, be, and take care of that situation. I'm sorry, I don't believe it one bit because here's the problem. That person accused Homeland Security of being Nazis at one point in time. She accused them of being Nazis. And she has not liked them one one bit. She wants those borders open. If she could have her way, she would open up those borders. Well, the problem with that is that she doesn't know, she hates the border so much and she hates the people who are guarding our safety as Americans. She hates them so much and called them Nazis. She, there's no way that she can solve anything down there. In fact, she will probably make it worse. It was Biden who, who encouraged these individuals to come up. So now we have an influx of individuals who should not be here. Children who should not be here, children who came up by themselves, who should never have done that because they heard that Biden was going to be president and that uh, that he and Harris were going to open up the border. So, listen, there was an invitation for them to come from the president of the United States and the vice president. They literally stopped the building the wall because of politics. They literally stopped telling... Uh, uh, 
uh, illegal aliens when they were coming across the border to go home because of politics. Every decision that this government is making is based on politics and not what is good for the American people. And we, so we have a problem. This nation has a problem. It has a an inept administration that can't do anything unless it's political. Just like we have a Congress right now with Nancy Pelosi that can't do anything unless it's political, as she's trying to remove a congresswoman, a Republican congresswoman who is very close on votes. So she wants to kick her out of Congress. So everything that is done within the nation's capital at the moment has nothing to do with its good and right for the American people. It is all based upon politics and power and what they can do to each other. Not what they can do for America, but what they're doing against America. And we see it in the Republican Party too. So we, we as Americans, we're sitting here and we're watching this individual who cannot answer questions or make a sentence, uh, call himself a leader of a nation when he's not even leading. Not in one bit is he leading. If you think he's leading, then listen, come, come to Florida because there's some swamp land here that I don't own title to, but I'd love to sell you. This is ridiculous. I'm, I'm telling you, I have never seen... So much nonsense in my life. Politics has become a profession where if you're not corrupt, you're, pol- you're a politician. If you're corrupt, you are a politician. Misleading and misguiding the American people, not talking to the American people. And every time that he does talk to the American people, it's like he is sad, he is ashamed of America, and, and, and he doesn't even like America. And the same thing with Harris, too. It's like they don't even love this country. And I know that a lot of you are with me that we truly do love this country. We don't like the politics, we don't like the government at the moment. But we truly love this country, and we want to see this country to be the best at everything. But when decisions are, are made based upon political agendas, nothing ever gets done that helps the, the American people. You know, for ages and ages now, the, the Democrats have been talking about the dreamers those individuals who came up with their parents when they were very, very young, and now they're stuck here in America. They're neither an American citizen, nor are they another country citizen. They're in limbo. And every single campaign, every single political campaign that is done by the Democrats, they are always saying that they're fighting for these individuals when in fact they haven't done anything The dreamers are just a political playbook in the Democrats. They make all these promises of what they're going to do, but then they never do it. They have had all of these years and all of this opportunity to address the situation of dreamers, to address the immigration laws, and they have never wanted to touch it. Just a second. I've got to get a cup of coffee because I'm steaming. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We have a nation that is governed by political hacks, and all that they want to do is play politics. There are some individuals there in Congress who are trying to get stuff done, but they're getting stuck. They're getting stuck, and, and pretty soon they begin playing the games that the other people are playing, and pretty soon we have nothing being done in our nation's capital. And it's happening every single day. And now we have a gate. We have this fence around the nation's capital where even Americans cannot even go in. Can't even go into the people's house. The people's capital. They know 
that what they are doing in the nation's capital is evil and sinister and they want you not to be able to go visit them or talk to them anymore because they know what they're doing is wrong. They don't want you to get involved in the power plays of American politics. They don't want things to get done on infrastructure and health care and, and, and uh, international issues. They don't want anything. They don't want you to even be close to it because you have an opinion as an American. And they don't want to hear your opinion anymore because they are in power, not you. And now they're trying to change the voting laws of the nation so that we don't even have even any say pretty much anymore. Why even vote sometimes? Because these politicians have it all screwed up. And all that they do is against the American people and not for the American people. And that's what we're seeing in the nation's capital right now. And we're seeing it in the White House. We're seeing it in Congress. We're seeing it in the Senate. So at the moment, we have no leadership in America. Our capital is under siege. It's in a situation where Americans have no say in government any longer. Now it is a party-based government. It's the party that wants the only control of government. No democracy. No freedom of speech. No freedom of debate. You know what I love? Several years ago, I was in London, and I went into Parliament, and I sat in, in Parliament, and I listened to the time period of the day where the Prime Minister and his ministers have to get up and answer questions of the Parliament. I think that is the best thing I have ever heard. And I think that's what we really need at the moment. You know, those those people in Parliament, as I was sitting there, they were literally pounding that Prime Minister with these questions. And he had to come up with a response. I think it's time that we begin asking the questions of our President that are based upon the needs of the nation and not on the needs of power anymore. I think that idea in in the in in the House of Parliament in London where the Prime Minister literally has to answer any question asked him in the question and answer session of Parliament because then you kind of get a sense and an answer of what's going on. So we have this in a press that stands there, or I guess it was seated in chairs. What were they like? Twenty feet apart or something? They looked like oh, it was stupid. But it's, we have a press that do not ask questions anymore because they will only ask a question that supports their agenda. When did press the press start having an agenda? A political agenda. One. When did that start happening? Well, it started in Obama's administration is when it started. But now we have this situation where the press are no longer even practicing the 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 ethics part of their oath that they take. I mean, it's not an oath, but it's a it's a uh, it's a code of ethics that they are supposed to follow through the journalism organization that they're a member of. And they are always supposed to remain independent of the story. Independent of the story. Independent of making relationships with with politicians. Independent of a political agenda. But they have failed. They do not have any ethics any longer. The press have no ethics. Congress has no ethics. The Senate has no ethics. In the White House, the president has no ethics at the moment. So we are led by an unethical group of people. And people who are reporting on the other unethical people, 
<laughs> and we're in trouble. This nation is in trouble. Now, one good thing, and you have to you have to believe me when I say this. This nation has had good presidents and we have had bad presidents. And we have always survived because there was always a change in leadership. Change in leadership in the Congress, a change in leadership in the Senate, change in leadership in the White House. And we're at the point where we now need a new change in Congress. So I want you to remember this as you're gearing up to vote in 2022 that it's time that we make a change in Congress, and it's time that we have a change in the Senate. Because now we have a president who is just willy-nilly making up things. So we need a Congress that is going to react to what the president is trying to do to this nation. We need a balance. Right now, we do not have a balance. We have an inept president... And we have a Congress that is trying to have the control over the presidency and over the American people. And it's supposed to be that the American people have control over the Congress because they are supposed to be representing us, but we don't have that anymore. We've lost it. Our ability to place our vote at the highest level and vote in people who we trust to lead is no longer there because the party, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, are now the voices of government and it's not the American people. The American people's voice is gone. So it's time for change. It's time for change. I wish I could say change is a coming, but it's not. Unless you and I do something about it in 2022. Listen, if you feel that you need to run for a congressional seat or for a Senate seat, stand up and do it. Be a voice out there for the American people. Don't be a voice for a party. Be a voice for the American people because they are the ones that need it. We cannot be having a weak immigration policy or a weak border policy because that creates so much havoc upon the American people because now we become responsible for those individuals coming across the border illegally it costs us Americans tax dollars to support those illegal individuals now I know that you're going to that you're going to Yell at me for saying the word illegal, but they are illegal. Because once you start sneaking across the border or hiring somebody to sneak you across the border and not coming in through the legal channels of the American immigration system, you've broken the law. And once you start going into hiding, you become a fugitive. It's an illegal act to cross the border with no record or anything of you entering our country. We do not know what your health background is. We do not know what your COVID status is. We do not know anything about you. We don't even know what your criminal background is. But for some reason, individuals in, in the United States feel it's okay to allow them to come across the border. Honestly, would you allow anybody into your home if you did not know who they were? So my point is, the end of my message for the day <laughs> is we're in trouble. This nation needs to be taken back by the American people because we are so up the creek without a paddle at the moment. So we American people have got to take back our nation. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, but what you're seeing right now as a leadership within our nation is intolerable. 
It's unethical. It's dangerous to the democracy of a nation who has been, who has been the picture board, the movie, the story about democracy to all the rest of the world. And that's why so many people want to come here because they know that America provides that democracy establishment that they can do and be whatever they want to do. We need rules. We need guidelines. We need laws. We need to be a country of laws. But if politicians are willing to break those laws and allow illegal individuals to come into the nation, into the nation, then we have no laws. When we have cities saying, let's get rid of our police department, what kind of idiots do that? In every single organization, even in the little tiny community that we have, we don't have the normal police, but we have security officers that are always walking the streets here. If you go into Northwood and you go into the little village there, you will see officers walking the beat every single day, talking to people, making sure that crimes are not being committed. Because they believe in the rule of law. They believe that they need to protect those businesses. They need to protect the citizens that live there. So when I see cities and I see people saying, let's dismantle the police department, when they are the ones that provide security for our neighborhoods, for our churches, for our schools, for our children, for our families, for our businesses, and yet they want to destroy them. They have no qualms about destroying the whole neighborhood. And we keep talking about all of these gun controls, but if you look at the city of Chicago, who has the strictest gun controls, has the most shootings and murders ever. Let me tell you, a criminal will always find a way to commit a crime. They will always find a gun. They will always find a knife. They will always find a machete. They will always find a bomb. They will always find something to destroy other people's lives because that's the individual that they are. They are a criminal and they have a destructive mode and they excuse me <clears throat> and they don't care about the havoc that they reap upon communities. Now President Biden doesn't see anything wrong with that. Harris was probably one of the worst attorney generals that California ever had. And there she is. She's sitting in that seat as vice president. And we have to watch her very carefully because her decision-making process is terrible because it's all based upon politics. Not upon the law. Not upon what is right, what is wrong, what is ethical, what is unethical. It's all based upon politics. Poli making your decision on politics destroys a nation very quickly. This destroys the democratic process and the rule of law process of this nation. She was the worst attorney general that California ever had. I know I lived there at the time. I know what she was doing. So the, to, 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 to end all this, because I know that you guys are about out of coffee, <laughs> we have no leadership in this nation. Politicians are not leaders. They're not. Politicians are only politicians. And they will do and, do and breathe and take anything and, and say anything and do anything just so that they have that bit of power that they can wield upon the American people. So we have a responsibility as Americans to go out and do something in 2022 and make a change in Congress, make a change in the Senate. Because we can no longer have this imbalance. We can no longer have this imbalance in, in Washington, D.C., where 
the powers, only one power presides in Washington, D.C. That puts us into a dangerous situation. And it is time that we start doing something different because we can no longer have this nation run by politicians that are so unethical in nature that they will tell you one thing and literally do something else. I love this country, and I know that you do too. 2022 is our year to do something. Now, I hope... By the way, that's the end of my... um, That's the end of my um, rant today on politics. I used to do every Friday for a while there. I was doing what was called Political Friday. And I would come on and rant like this. And then I got so pissed at myself because then I started sounding like the rest of the politicians out there. And I don't ever want to do that. I don't ever want to be that individual who is moaning and groaning and complaining all the time. So I changed it a little bit and said, okay, I will only talk about political issues that affect our finances, affect our businesses, affect our marriages and and, and relationships. Because there's a lot of things happening right now in politics, especially in Washington, D.C., with various bills that are being pounded into the the congressional walls there that affect us financially, that affect... our our businesses as we try to go forward, especially when these tax issues are coming up. So that's that's mainly what I wanted to to deal with my political Fridays is dealing with those issues that 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 harm us financially and tax wise and and ethically. Unfortunately I want to tell you this that today I talked about leadership and how we have a lack of leadership But that is a part of you and I in our daily life as we try to survive in this in this great country of ours. If we do not have any leadership, then that just falls it starts from the top, right? And it goes down, 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 and everyone follows normally what's up at the top. And we have when we have bad leadership and when we have no leadership at the at the top, we have no leadership in the rest of government. We do not have leadership in the Pentagon. We do not have leadership in the Treasury Department. By the way, I'm I'm pissed at the Treasury Department at the moment. They are not addressing this this situation that we're having with higher costs of, of living. They're not looking at it. Because the, the comments that have come out of the Yellen's mouth have all been political responses and not common sense responses that will affect you and I and affect this nation. So understand why I'm so frustrated because I see literally no leadership from the top downward. Remember, when you have no leadership and no policies and no expectations of the people working below you, you have nothing. We do not have it at the Border Patrol at the moment. We have it at Homeland Security. We don't have it in, in the Justice Department. We don't, have it, we don't have it anywhere at the moment. You don't hear a peep out of anybody else because there's no leadership ability to enforce what needs to happen in the United States to make it a stronger and better country. We don't have anything. When you have a president that cannot effectively communicate with the American people, we have a problem. Now, see what you did to me? You made me rant some more. But I'm just trying to tell you this, very simply. Without strong leadership, nothing will get done in any other part of the government. They will just follow. They will not come up with better and greater ideas. They won't do anything. They will just follow because they don't know what the president is all about. They don't know what his what his stance is. They don't know what his policies are. They don't have even to this day. I have no idea what President Biden's policy is on the economy because there is none. So leadership plays a very important part in your life and my life. And if we don't see it, then we have to start leading ourselves. 
as Americans, we have got to stand up and we've got to start leading ourselves and leading our communities, leading our churches, leading our schools, taking back the things that we used to have that made us a great country. But if we just have political stances all around this nation, nothing will get done. And that's why nothing has gotten done, because America has become so politicized in every single thing that we do. I just saw a a posting on Facebook from my school that I went to in the state of Washington. And they came out against racism. So even Christian schools are beginning to make these political comments and in, in innuendos that... There's racism out there. Now, I've, I've gone to Walla Walla for a long time. And we had, when, when, I went to Walla, when I went to school in Walla Walla, we had a lot of people from a lot of different places. And you know what? We all were with each other. We all had these, these, these nice, gosh, I tell you, I had an individual who saved my life there because I had no money going to school. But I don't know how she did it. But she always got that 20 bucks from the uh, associated student body. And she always made, on that 20 bucks, she made us the great Puerto Rican meals on a Saturday afternoon ever. And to this day, I, even when I see her, when I talk to her, I always thank her for that time. For that ability to take $20 and feed a bunch of students. Racism, it, it's there, yes, but if we work together on it, it gets solved. And over the years, it's gotten solved. It's gotten better and it's gotten better and better. But because racism is a political stance, then it comes out again and again and again. And the Democrats love to use racism in every single thing that they try to to fight. So my ranting has gone on. I think I'm done. I think it's time now to think about... I have a whole bunch of stuff to do on my desk. I have a ton of stuff. But I think it's time now that we go on, you and I, Forget about all this stupid politics and what we saw in this press conference and let's move on today. Let's go out and have fun. Let's go out and enjoy our family. Let's go out and have a good meal someplace or a cup of coffee with a friend. Get out there and do something. This weekend, I'm kind of I'm kind of excited because I haven't been able to do this ever since I was a kid. So Palm Beach is having a international yacht show. Now I haven't been to a boat show since I was a kid. Since I lived up in the in the city of Seattle, I have not been to a single boat show since then. So it's been a long time. So I bought my ticket and I'm going to go look at boats. Now I can't afford a boat. I can't even afford a dinghy, okay? I can't even afford an inner tube, okay, to, to float myself on. But I haven't been to a boat show in a long time. And when I was a kid, I loved going to those boat shows. Now, I won't be able to climb around on them like I used to when I was a kid. <laughs> I think as a kid, I used to explore every little nook and cranny of a boat. And, and, I, and I would always dream that I was going to have this boat. And then there came that day where I could buy a boat. And so I bought a boat. And I think I kept it for one year. And then I sold the boat. And then I was so happy. <laughs> I was the happiest day. I was the happiest day in my life. In my life, when I saw that boat drifting off with some another owner, <laughs> and saying, "Ah, freedom again." <laughs> but I've always loved boats. That's the problem with me. I'm hooked on boats. If you look at my Facebook and my my um, my Instagram pages, I follow boats all around the world. Because I've always loved boats, and especially yachts, and very well-groomed yachts that are luxurious. These are my dreams, right? Right? Unfortunately, like all dreams, <laughs> dreams 
die off at some point in time and you move on to another dream. <laughs> but I love both. So anyway, so that's what my Saturday is going to be tomorrow. I'm going to be at the Palm Beach International Yacht Show. And they, they, I, I looked at the pictures and there's a ton of boats there from small ones all the way up to the mighty big ones. And I'm looking forward to it because I'm, I'm t- you know, it's been so long as a kid being able to go to one of these things. And it was a, a, a tradition when I was a kid with my dad. We would always go every, that in the car show. Boat show, car show, both of those, <laughs> both of those were the most important times of the year as for me as a kid. So the more I'm gonna be a kid, I'm gonna go and get a hot dog and maybe walk around and see some really nice boats. And I'll have to take a handkerchief because I'll probably be drooling <laughs> looking at the boats. But it's okay. It's a day off. It's a day of of enjoying. The sights of beautiful design boats. Not thinking about politics. Not thinking about business. Not thinking about anything except my hot dog, my Diet Coke, and a boat. Listen, you guys. If you like what I do, I want you to support me by going to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. And support me there and help me as I produce these podcasts almost on a daily basis. And if you have a question, a business question, a tax question, or you have a comment, or if you want to yell at me, <laughs> you can send me a text at 818 Or you can send me an email at info at lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. Listen, everybody, go out and have a great day. This is Mike Lodge. It's the weekend. Enjoy it. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye. And a little slow dancing with me. Time to get back up and fly in the fastest lane everyone needs to come back around. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. Slow down any length We all have to stay tall Running through the crowd on a busy street Need to find some air in the summer heat So how about the music Like a whisper from the sea Dancing with me